Hello, going to do a, another long-term follow-up uh, review on a product I've previously shown before. Uh, the reason I do these is because um, I think most reviews, mine included, are done um, very soon after getting a product. Uh, you might do a few rudimentary tests, um, might maybe you'll take it out for a weekend, and then you come back and you'll, you'll report your findings, which are generally going to be positive because you bought a product that you knew was going to be good because chances are, if you're gear-minded, you've at least looked it up already. So that's all most reviews are, are done. That's the way that I've done most of my reviews as well. Um, however, um, I think there's a there's a space um, and there's a good reason to revisit things after you've used them uh, in your life for um, months. And in this case, pretty much one year. It's the one year anniversary of um, my ownership of this Leatherman Skeletal CX Multi Tool. Yeah. Um, when I originally reviewed it, which was I think my first video, um, I remarked about its quality, it's high, high, uh, high grade blade steel that was very sharp out the box, it's handy carabin air system and it's a handy pocket clip and the bit drivers. Um, all those things are still the case, uh, except I've noticed a few, um, well I've, I've got a few other things that, have, that I have to say about the tool now having used it for uh, so long. So just for, um, just for overview. It's a um, mid to light duty multi-tool. Um, primary focus is the knife and the pliers. Uh, each of those share about the same um, same amount of um, uh, limelight, I would say, on this product. Uh, it's an upgraded version of the Leatherman Freestyle, which drops the carabiner and the, and the screwdriver. So it's got knife, it's got the uh, standard multi-purpose pliers, and then it's got your bit driver which has a Phillips bit, which is a number two and number one Phillips. And then it's got in the handle of the other side, oh yeah, you can push out your flat bit as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, see, it's got the flat bit coming out there. And the retention systems, as I said, carabiner and pocket clip. Now, um, on, the, on the positive side, uh, the knife's remained very sharp, um, still cuts paper, I've touched it up, um, I made the foolish mistake of just in my use, I cut some emery paper with it, and it put a big chip in the blade about there, but I've got my good old um, Japanese water stone, buff that right out, it's, yeah, uh, shaving sharp once again. Uh, so the blade's good, the pliers have done a few things for me. haven't used them that much to be honest. Um, it's more of a, I carry this more of an, as an EDC knife rather than um, for the main plier function. Um, in regards to the retention system, the carabineer, that's, a, that's how I prefer to carry it. I'll just go in straight, get my shorts through there and you'll see me getting around like that. In regards to the pocket clip, the pocket clip's fine. Some people have the criticism that it causes the tool to roll because it's very side heavy. I haven't had that issue. However, when put in my pocket, you will notice that, so it goes in this way, sits in the pocket. When you put your hand past this tool to get to your keys, your hand will catch on this tip here. And that's, it's not razor sharp, but that's quite annoyingly sharp. Um, and that's annoyingly sharp enough to stop me from um, using this in my pocket. And the only other criticism I can level after all this time, really, and this is whether it's my skeletal or whether it's everyone's, the driver doesn't lock in. And it's supposed to lock in. There's a little catch bar. There's a little catch bar there that should latch into. It latch into the notches on the side of the drivers and it doesn't so you can just pull them out but um, the knife still hasn't failed um, as I said that was my mistake I um, did it on the split second impulse um, had some sandpaper I had cutting so I got this knife and did a big mean slice like right in the middle so just starting from this point and just force my way down and it's um, yeah, put a big chunk in it, so that was my, my problem there. 
But uh, as I said, the blade still took a new edge uh, very adequately, and it's uh, probably one of the sharper tools I've got at the moment. I still love the looks. I love the black colour. Uh, the uh, non-CX version has just the, um, this is a 154cm blade. The non-CX version, your basic skeletal, has the um, 420HC blade, which is a bit of a, which you'll find is going blunter on you quicker, and it also has serrations. I prefer the fine edge, and I think definitely worth uh, spending the extra $20 uh, to get yourself a CX. Um, going rate on this has gone up a bit, I've noticed. On eBay, these are now about 110 I think I paid $98 for mine. And some people are selling them as high as, in Australia, uh, as high as about $160. So, just whatever you do, don't pay that much money. But um, I'll just do, just in regards to the knife, and we'll do all of your do all your whittling. We'll um, you know, definitely cut your paper. Definitely cut the paper. I primarily have used it for boxes and things like that. So just a great tool still. Still a, still a great blade. However, I'd recommend against carrying it in your pocket. Because that'll catch on you there. What Leatherman could do is just file that down. Or I suppose what I could do is file that down. But then I've looked at it pretty closely. I'm not sure if that would affect the way the blade looks. So I'm probably just going to leave it and keep it hanging. But there. In conclusion, the Skeletal CX is just as good a year later. And I'll see myself carrying it for many a year to come. Thanks for watching. See you then.